Conscious. Good afternoon. You're listening to My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm your host, Jasmine Urbina, here in the studio with my dad, Alex Urbina. Today, we're going to be talking about the fear of confrontation, which is a really interesting topic because I, in my experience, a lot of people have this fear. And a lot of adults, a lot of grown men and women are all afraid to confront, confront people or to stand up for themselves. Really, and that's really what it is. Yeah, you know, when you think about having a fear of confrontation, it's like you want to ask yourself, what am I afraid of? I think just being in the question when it comes to that fear uh, really helps you get clarity about what is it that I'm really afraid of. So, when you, so if I were to ask you this question, because we all have some fear of confrontation, including myself, to some level um, or to some degree, if if and when you are willing to look at yourself and have that courage to ask yourself, what am I really afraid of when it comes to confronting someone or speaking up for myself? What's the fear about? What are you afraid of? Personally, I'm afraid of ruining that relationship. I think for some reason I have it in my head or in my eyes, I see it as a negative thing. I think confronting someone would ruin our relationship instead of making it stronger or making it better or more effective. I have this idea that it's only bad. It's only going to cause problems. All right. Now, let's open up the possibility that if you have a fear of confrontation and you're labeling it confrontation, you've already decided that it's a negative thing. Right. If you switch out the word from confrontation to I'm going to address an issue, um, you've already now, by relabeling it or renaming it, you've given it a new meaning. So what if you can choose to d uh, see it as, I'm going to address this issue when so-and-so comes in, or when I get into work, I'm going to address this issue rather than I'm going to confront this person on this. Just using the words the way that you describe it already sets the tone for your come from. What's my come from when I go and speak to Andrew? What's my, my come from when I go uh, talk to Jennifer? My come from is I'm going to address whatever the issue is so that we can resolve it. When you're already speaking from, I'm going to go confront so-and-so, you're already given that negative connotation that we're going to have, you know, some, we're going to like go at it. We're going to have some, I might have some pushback and then we're going to kind of challenge each other. You're already setting that into motion based on even, even using the word of confrontation. All right. Like you said, uh, just the word that you use has a lot of, um, power, a lot of meaning. Um, I think the word confrontation is very threatening or it comes off really aggressive versus if I just, like you said, I wanted to go address something to Jennifer, I would really not be confronting her. That's just my personality. I would never just go up like I was going to attack her, but I would still be afraid to bring up something that either means something to me or that I would like to fix in our relationship. And I think when you're using the word confrontation, you're already acting as though you're going to get the pushback. You're already almost almost uh, predetermining the outcome. So when I when I'm, I'm going to go confront Jennifer on my way in, I'm already sourcing that Jennifer is going to be giving me some pushback. That she's already going to hear it in a certain way and she's already going to be uh, resisting it. She's already going to automatically be in reaction to it. I'm already sourcing that I'm going to get that confrontation. All right. Rather than um, I'm going to go you know, have a conversation with Jennifer and we're going to address whatever the issue is so that we can find a solution. Yeah. You're not proactive. You're almost coming from a reactive place. Right. I think when I... When I I have to mentally prepare myself to address or confront somebody <laughs> because I already initially, I think I'm going to get that initial reaction. I'd never really assume that someone's going to just sit there for a second and go, hmm, okay, great. Let's talk about this. Most of the time it's, they want to defend themselves or they want to point out what I'm doing wrong instead of them. And, you know, there's always, not always, but most of the time that's been my experience. So I do go in with that mindset. Now, if somebody were to come confront me or address me, I would probably do the same thing. I would probably react right away where I should really do like I just said, like what I would want from them, which is to say, hmm, that's interesting. Let's talk about this. You know, when I think of the word confrontation, I think of, you know, two people meeting in a certain area and having a discussion about an issue, right? So I think about, let's say you're the person that I'm going to address an issue with, and I show up to the meeting place that we're going to engage this conversation. 
when I get to you, I need to look at the issue as being like this ball of energy, right? When I get to you, I'm going to put the ball of energy on the table and say, uh, Jasmine, I want to talk about this. Whatever I'm pointing at, that ball of energy, that issue, that, that topic, I'm pointing at that, that ball of energy, that topic that's on the table is not a part of me. It's separate than me. It's the, it's the issue. The issue is the issue. I'm me. I'm separate from the issue. The issue is just the topic that we're going to talk about. I think what people do is that they don't separate themselves from the issue. They, they almost come attached to the issue. So it, it doesn't allow them to be freed up and neutral about taking things things personal they don't they show up already as though that if you're gonna if you got a problem with this issue you got a problem with me rather than okay I'm have I, I realize that you have an uh, uh, that you're having an issue with whatever the topic is and you can't separate yourself okay so f for for an example let's say I'm talking to someone and I want to address the issue of I feel like you don't hear me how do I separate myself from that? Because that's my feeling and that's my belief. So then what you do is you offer it in a way that it's more of your observation or your experience. So, hey, dad, you know, can I share honestly with you about a way that I feel um, when we're engaging in conversation? Absolutely. Once you ask me for permission and I say yes. I am open to having that discussion with you. You now have my permission to share that information with me. Right. And so once I say yes, it's um, I want to give you some feedback of how I'm feeling. And it has nothing to do with necessarily with you because on your end, you could be doing it from an authentic, you know, honest place. But there's something within me that I'm experiencing in a, this in a certain way. Uh, my observation is that when you're communicating to me, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm making up. This is my my observation of it. You're at least giving me the opportunity to look at it and go, wow, I never realized that that's, that's how you're interpreting whatever it is that I was saying. And I'm so sorry that that's how you feel. That is totally not my intention. Does that make sense? You're kind of, you're, you're putting in place the, the difference between I'm making you feel like that versus this is how you're choosing to interpret it. This is how you're choosing to feel when I'm coming to you and communicating the way that I communicate. Right. And that way I'm taking responsibility That's for the right. way that I feel. And, uh, and, and, and just right off the bat by you saying it like that and you taking responsibility for how you're feeling, my guard's not coming up. Right. Uh, you know, my the percentage of me being re, um, being reactive to it and getting upset or getting tagged by it is a small percentage. It's probably a four percent or an eight percent. But if you come to me and say, "Dad, this is how you make me feel," Dad, this is the way that you know when you when you talk to me, you you don't talk to me in this way. You should be talking to me in that way. You're directing it to to me as though that's this is the truth about how I'm that I have that I'm that powerful that I make you feel like that, and that's not necessarily true. I don't make you feel anything. I'm just expressing myself the way that I express myself. You're the one that's the meaning maker to uh, how you're perceiving whatever it is that I'm trying to communicate to you. Right. I like that you use the word observation because I feel like when I'm trying to share my feelings with people, I understand that they're my feelings and I understand that that it isn't the truth. It's just the way that I feel. That's right. However, when I share that, people tend to hear it like it's the truth or that it's a fact or that it's something that I think is their fault when it's not. If I use the word, it's my observation or I've noticed or s separate words other than I feel, all of a sudden it's not the truth anymore. But this is what's cool about you getting more conscious and more aware about your ability to communicate more effectively. When you go to address somebody and you want to address an issue, if you're a little bit aware that they could possibly ha be at a lower level of consciousness, very reactive, you know, they, they have the tendency to take things personal, and you see that, that that's the, the box that they're in. When you, when you come to the, uh, to the agreement of that you're going to have this conversation, you're already aware that they're, let's say, at a level three of, of consciousness. You can prepare them. You can prep them to hear them, hear whatever it is you're going to share with them in a way that's more neutral. So if I'm coming to you and I know you're hot-headed, you take things personal, and it's like, oh my God, I already know how she's going to interpret this. So when I'm showing up, I'm being a little bit more compassionate, and I'm spending a little more time prepping you on how to hear my observation. So I would come to you and go, Jasmine, 
I'm going to share with you some feelings that I'm feeling, but I don't want you to take it personal. I know it's not your intention. I know that you don't purposely trying to make me feel like that. Furthermore, I'm not even telling you that you make me feel like that. This is some stuff that I need to work on. But when you do share and you have a certain tone, I interpret that like you're upset at me or you're mad at me. So then I go and then I start beating myself up. But but I'm totally aware that I could it's just something that I triggers me and it's my own stuff that I need to work through. By me taking now that responsibility, I've taken it off of pointing the finger at you and blaming you for me making me feel like that because you're not really making me feel like that right you're just sharing the way you share and opening up the way you're opening up and and talking whatever it is that's coming you know straight from your heart or or from whatever you know emotions you have but the the bottom line is is can you take responsibility for the way that you communicate of course that's the question, not just to you, but to everybody listening. Right. Can you take responsibility, one, for the way that you feel, the way that you interpret, and stop making it about the other person if the other person is making you feel like that? They're not. They're just choosing to express themselves however they express themselves. You're the meaning maker to everything. Right. I'm choosing to see or feel or believe whatever they're giving off that's right well yeah exactly whatever it is they're giving off is just it's just neutral until you give it meaning you're the one that adds the meaning like man you're making me feel like i'm not important when you're when you're communicating to me you're making me feel like you know that i'm that i'm not um a part of your your agenda or whatever it is but the error is in you believing that whatever they're communicating is making you feel like anything. They're not making you feel like anything. They're just communicating. You're the one that's giving the meaning to it. You're creating the story around whatever it is, the emotions that's coming up. And unconscious people don't realize that, that they're at choice. Unconscious people don't realize that I'm feeling like this because I'm choosing to feel like this. But if I start working on the way that I hear things, if I can hear them a different way, if I can perceive the information coming in at me, whether it's talking or if it's an, a- an action or whatever it is that's, that's, that I'm absorbing, if I can choose to see it a different different way I could ha- I could possibly have a breakthrough I could possibly not allow things to stress me out I can possibly now from that place not go into reaction not get my feelings hurt not get uh, angry or upset and that's what mastery is about personal mastery is about you learning that that you have the ability to perceive it a different way rather than the one or two ways that you've been used to doing it your whole life All right so as a parent in a talking about the parent-child relationship, is it hard or challenging to confront your kid on an issue? Because I know as a kid, it's sometimes really difficult to talk to you or mom about an issue that is going on between our relationship. It's only difficult or challenging because there's some things that you haven't learned about yourself. There's some tools that you haven't been taught or you haven't mastered yet to be able to have powerful conversations with people to be able to get them to see um, what whatever it is that you're looking to get them to see so here's an example if in the last 20 interactions you've had with me and you opening up and sharing and I'm giving you advice on just auto an automatic pilot I'm giving advice and you feel like I'm not hearing you then you would have to be able to sit with me and articulate yourself in a way that you say hey dad um, I just need you to know that the nine out of ten times that you've, you know, I've opened up and shared with you, you've given me unsolicited advice when I'm not asking you for that. What I really need from you, Dad, is just to hear me, be an outlet for me, be the the mirror for me. Sometimes I just need you to nod. I, I just need you to understand. I need someone else to just verify that what I'm saying is valid. Or I just need to bounce my frustration or my venting off somebody so that I can, so I can have, so I can get some clarity about it. When I come to you, I'm not always asking for you to fix my problems, and and in you, in your ability to just automatically want to offer me advice, I'm not always seeking that. And I wanted to give you that feedback, and I appreciate 
all your advice you do give me, I know you're giving to me because you love me unconditionally and you want me to win, but that doesn't always help me and doesn't support me on the long run. Now, if you said that to me, I, my, my mouth would drop and I would go, where did you come from? Like what, you know, what planet are you from? Because most people don't speak like that. They don't, they don't articulate, articulate themselves that clear, but, but it would, but it would be some great feedback for me to go, wow, I, you know, I never really realized that I do just give you unsubstantial solicited advice and it, and it, yeah you're right it does come from me wanting you to win and wanting to fix your problems but you know what now that you shared that with me Maybe it's my realization that I don't need to fix your problems, that you're so powerful and competent enough that just being a great listener, you'll figure out your own solutions. Right, and I think part of the coaching style parenting would be asking questions so that I could come to the conclusion on my own yeah. instead of giving me the answer or giving me the advice or what you would do. I think I would definitely find more value in whatever answer conclusion I came to myself. And it'd be even more powerful if you gave me that as a suggestion instead of give me just the feedback follow up with so so my request of you so thanks for listening to me and let me vent that out without taking that personal but moving forward what would be really great is when I do come and vent to you like this if I want the advice I will flat out ask you hey so what do you think I should do and that'll be a key symbol for I'm, I want your advice if I don't ask you for that what would be beneficial to me is just engage in a conversation where you're asking me questions to help me think or help me self reflect to see if I can find my own solutions now if you're if you're telling me that that's what you need what you're doing is you're teaching me how to be a great listener to be more effective for you so you can uh, realize that you that you do have all your own solutions right and so for the parents listening I'm sure that's not something that they get from their kids so maybe it'd be a good idea to try that and see if it works well just us talking about it for a lot of parents they're like oh my god I never really seen it like that and didn't know that was possible so right we're just I talking about possibilities right now that peep that extraordinary parenting conscious parenting is a, is thinking at that level is learning and discovering those things that it's we're like in a classroom right now really talking about higher level of of communication and higher higher level of parenting right but i just wouldn't want well i would hate to think that there's people out there listening that could possibly be waiting for that from their kids. Yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. It's <laughs> well, not going to come. It's very seldom. I mean, it's a small percentage. It's probably two percent because if look, if you're if you're a full grown woman in your thirties or in your forties or or a man for that for that matter, and you're barely learning it, you know, it's barely a new level of consciousness for you and an aha moment and awakening for you. Come on, your kids are 12, 13 years old. If you don't haven't got there, your kids aren't going to get there. It's part of their journey. And it's your job to get there first to learn that so you can teach them that. Mm -hmm. I hope that, you know, as a parent, you know, I want you to know that, that the reason why we're talking about this is that you can have the aha moment and realize that and then start adding that into the relationship to teach your kids. Or, or as you're learning it, now you can, you know, set your kids aside and have a conversation with them and say, Hey, look, from now on, the way I want our relationship to look is I want to be more, I want to practice being a better listener. And I want to see you now moving forward as that you're competent and powerful enough to find your own solutions. So what I'm going to practice doing is when you come to me, and you share, I want to be a better listener. And so what my commitment to you is that I'm not always going to give you the advice unless you ask me for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a lot of questions to help you come to your own conclusion of what your solutions should be. And that's that's being a proactive parent. That's that's being a conscious parent and really preparing your kids and teaching them how to, to communicate more effectively. Yeah, and I think just communicating that is teaching them something. Absolutely. I think... Um, I noticed that my brother, my sister, and I, we all have a very challenging time. <laughs> it's very difficult for us to communicate, which is very weird because I, my experience of you and mom is you guys are really good communicators, and somewhere there's that lack between us kids. So I think even even as much as you teach your kids, there's still going to be stuff that falls through that that is missing yeah you know we as human beings we all have our own insecurities our own fears our own doubts and you got your own stuff and your siblings have their own stuff and doesn't matter how great i am as an example um you're still going to get stuff that's going to get in your way and as you, and you're on your own journey you need to figure that out and i get to just be patient and, and kind of keep 
you know, practicing and being the example for you. Sounds great. We'll talk more about it after the break. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.